I welcome you to my channel, subscribe and listen to my new stories every day. The evening had a glossy sheen of perfection as Claire and I walked into the dimly lit ambience of our favorite restaurant. Celebrating my birthday had always been her way of going over the top, and tonight was no exception. The soft hum of a violin playing in the background, paired with the murmur of intimate conversations, set a romantic scene. We clinked our wine glasses in a tender toast, her eyes sparkling with the same warmth that first drew me to her. As we walked home later, the crisp night air felt invigorating after the warmth of the wine. We strolled hand in hand, our steps in sync, when I felt a prickling sensation on the back of my neck. My jovial banter ceased as I noticed a shadowy figure maintaining a steady distance behind us. The streets, less crowded now, echoed our footsteps and those of our follower. Claire seemed oblivious, caught up in recounting an amusing incident from her day at school where she taught. My alertness peaked when, at a quieter corner of our path, the figure abruptly closed the distance. Before I could react, a cold, sharp sensation pressed against my lower back. A voice, young and tinged with a desperate kind of madness, cut through the night. If he's gone, will you come back to me? The voice belonged to a boy, barely a man, with eyes that burned too brightly. Claire's face drained of color as she recognized him. Her student, she stammered, someone she had mentored. But the truth, raw and unyielding, unraveled in his words, revealing a scandalous affair that had ended bitterly. The shock was paralyzing. There I was, feeling the threatening press of a knife against my skin, yet the betrayal sliced deeper. Every shared secret, every whispered, I love you, from her felt tainted. The boy's breath was ragged, his hands trembling as if he was deciding whether to thrust the knife or drop it. In that moment of high stakes, a plan began to form in my mind. If this was the abyss into which my marriage had descended, would reshape the fall into a climb. I needed to act, not just to defuse this immediate threat but to reclaim my life from the ruins of this betrayal. Turning slightly, I addressed him with a calculated calmness. You don't want to do this. Let's talk, I said, eyeing Claire with a cold detachment that I had never shown her before. My voice, usually warm and forgiving, now carried a sharp edge. The boy hesitated, the knife wavering. I seized the moment, knocking his hand aside and pushing Claire towards him. She's all yours, I declared, my voice hollow. The shock in her eyes was a bomb to the fury burning inside me. I walked away from that scene, from Claire and the chaos her betrayal had wrought. The legal proceedings that followed were swift. I was relentless. Her career, her reputation, I dismantled them piece by piece, fueled by the images of that night. As for the boy, lost to his obsessions, he faded from my life as quickly as he had entered. And so, as I walked through the streets alone, the night no longer seemed cold but a canvas, stark and empty, ready for new beginnings. The past was a shadow, a story to be concluded in the chapters to come, and I was the author, pen poised to write a future where betrayal had no place. The days following the incident were a blur of legal consultations and sleepless nights. Despite the turmoil, I moved with a singular purpose, ensuring Claire paid dearly for her betrayal. Each morning, I woke to the echo of that fateful encounter, and each day, I steeled myself for the battles ahead. On a particularly brisk morning, I strode into my lawyer's office, the sound of my footsteps resounding off the sleek marble floors. The atmosphere was sterile, cold, mirroring the resolve hardening within me. Max, we've got a strong case here, my lawyer, Elena, began as soon as I settled across from her. I've pulled her employment records, emails, even some testimonials from colleagues. It's not just about a divorce now. Her inappropriate relationship with a student could get her license revoked. I nodded, absorbing every word. I want to push for everything. The house, the savings. I don't want her to walk away with anything she can use to rebuild her life, not after this. Elena's eyes sharpened, a reflection of my own hardened intent. I'll prepare the documents. We'll make sure the court sees the full extent of her misconduct. 
As we delved deeper into our strategy, my phone buzzed incessantly. Ignoring it initially, I finally glanced at the screen to see multiple missed calls from Claire. Each call I ignored was a line drawn firmer between my past and my future. Later that day, as I returned home, the air felt heavier, charged with the impending storm of confrontation. As I turned the key in the lock, the door swung open abruptly, revealing Claire, her eyes red-rimmed and frantic. You can't do this, Jake. You can't take everything. Her voice was a mix of desperation and disbelief. Stepping into the foyer, I faced her, my expression unmoving. You did this to yourself, Claire. You crossed every line imaginable. But I loved you. Her outburst filled the space between us, thick with sorrow and regret. And yet you betrayed me, I replied coldly. Love isn't an excuse for betrayal, not for this. She took a step forward, her hands trembling. Jake, please. I made a mistake. I was confused, lost. He meant nothing. Enough. I cut her off, my voice slicing through her pleas. I believed in us, Claire. But while I was building a life with you, you were tearing it down. Now, you face the consequences. Her knees seemed to buckle under the weight of my words, and she sank to the floor, sobbing. Looking down at her, the woman I once loved, now a stranger mired in her deceit, I felt a bitter twist of victory. This was just the beginning of her unraveling. Get out, Claire, I stated, my tone final. Pack your things. I want you gone by tomorrow. As she gathered herself, her sobs punctuating the tense silence, I turned away. The battle lines were drawn, and the war was far from over. As the door closed behind her departing figure, I knew this chapter was just another step in a long journey of retribution, a journey that would strip away everything she held dear, just as she had done to me. The ensuing weeks were a masterclass in legal strategy as Elena and I maneuvered through the intricacies of the law to dismantle Claire's life piece by piece. Our meetings became frequent, each session laying out the groundwork for what I viewed as rightful retribution. On a cold, grey morning, I found myself seated across from Elena in her office, surrounded by stacks of legal documents and files detailing Claire's professional misconduct and our shared financial entanglements. We've secured a court date, Elena announced, her tone businesslike as she handed me a document. And I've pushed for an expedited hearing given the circumstances. We're also moving forward with the freeze on your joint accounts. She won't be able to siphon off any more funds. I nodded, a grim satisfaction settling over me. What about the school? Are they cooperating? They are, Elena confirmed her eyes flicking to the notes on her laptop. They've agreed to testify. It seems Claire's indiscretion wasn't as discreet as she thought. A few colleagues had their suspicions. Plus, the student, her lover, has been persuaded to provide a statement. The news was a blow to Claire's defense, and I reveled in the strategic win. Every angle covered, every loophole closed. It felt like setting the stage for a grand finale where justice would be served cold. As we discussed the next steps, my phone vibrated with a call from an unknown number. Excusing myself, I stepped out into the hallway to answer it, my heartbeat quickening with a mix of anticipation and dread. Mr. Reynolds, a hesitant voice came through, tinged with nervous energy. This is Nathan, Claire's, um, the student she was involved with. Nathan, I acknowledged, my voice steady. What can I do for you? I. I wanted to apologize, sir. And I wanted to tell you I'm going to make things right. I'm going to testify about everything. I didn't realize how much damage I was part of, he confessed, the words rushing out. Apology accepted, Nathan. Your testimony could make a significant difference, I replied, my mind already ticking through the implications of his statement. Returning to Elena, I relayed the conversation. He's ready to testify. It seems guilt has finally caught up with him. Good, she responded crisply. That testimony could be the linchpin for our case. 
Days later, the courtroom was a battleground as witnesses took the stand, the air thick with tension and anticipation. Claire was there, her demeanor subdued, her legal team whispering strategies in muted tones. As Nathan recounted their affair, the impact was palpable, whispers filled the room, and Claire's face turned ghostly pale. When it was my turn to speak, I stood, feeling every eye in the room on me. My voice was calm but firm as I recounted the betrayal, the emotional and financial damages. I trusted her with my life, with our future. She shattered that trust for a fleeting affair, I declared, the words resonating in the silent courtroom. The judge's gavel fell like a thunderclap at the end of the day, marking a temporary recess in the proceedings but not in the tension that gripped me. This was more than a divorce, it was a public reckoning. Leaving the courtroom, I felt the weight of the day's victories and the burden of the ongoing war. Each step was a move in a high-stakes game. I was winning, yes, but at what cost? As I walked down the courthouse steps, the chill of the early evening seemed to seep deeper, a reminder that the path of retribution was a cold one, indeed. But with each step, I reaffirmed my resolve to see this through, to ensure Claire would face the full consequences of her betrayal, just as I faced the remnants of a broken heart. The final day in court arrived with a sky as overcast as my thoughts. My relentless pursuit of retribution had led to this moment, where the outcome would seal Claire's fate and perhaps provide a grim sort of closure to my pain. The courthouse, once a building I passed without thought, had become the arena for my vengeance. As I sat, waiting for the proceedings to begin, I couldn't help but notice the sparse attendance. The story had lost its initial sensational appeal to the public, now it was just another sad tale of betrayal. Elena leaned over, her voice a whisper against the murmur of the few present. Are you ready? Today, we finish this. I nodded, my gaze fixed on Claire who sat across the room. Her eyes, once vibrant and full of life, were dulled by the weight of her choices and the consequences that followed. The sight should have brought satisfaction, yet a hollow ache throbbed in my chest. The judge entered, and a respectful silence enveloped the room. We are here to conclude the case, he announced, his voice echoing slightly in the high-ceilinged room. I have reviewed all testimonies and evidence. Before I give my verdict, does anyone have anything further to add? It was the moment I had prepared for, my final play in this twisted game. Standing, I felt every eye on me, the weight of their gazes like physical forces pressing against me. Yes, your honor. I would like to make a final statement. Permission granted, I began, not with the words I had rehearsed, but with a confession, my voice steady, throughout this trial, I have sought justice for a betrayal that shattered my world. But there's more that needs to be aired, not just Claire's transgressions but mine as well. A puzzled murmur ran through the room. Claire's eyes widened, confused and wary. In my quest for retribution, I continued, the words bitter on my tongue, I crossed lines I vowed never to approach. I hacked into Claire's personal accounts, invaded her privacy beyond legal means, all to gather the evidence that would crush her. The confession struck the room like a physical blow. Elena turned to me, her expression one of shock and betrayal of her own. Why? Claire's voice, small and broken, cut through the tension. Because losing you wasn't just painful, it was existential. I didn't just want you to pay. I wanted to annihilate your existence in my world, I admitted, the truth as raw and jagged as the emotions that tore through me. The judge's frown deepened. This is a serious admission. I must consider this new information. We will reconvene in one hour. The recess was a blur of whispered condemnations and legal advisories. Elena, her professional demeanor shaken, tried to strategize, but the paths were closed. My admissions had tainted our case, possibly even rendering it void. When we returned, the judge's verdict was swift and severe. Given the serious nature of Mr. Reynolds' actions, charges against him will be considered separately. As for the current case, given the tainted evidence, I am dismissing the charges against Ms. Thompson. Claire was free to go, 
the repercussions of her betrayal washed away by my own. As the courtroom emptied, she approached me, her steps hesitant. Jake, why? Because in trying to destroy you, I destroyed us both, I said, the realization cold and unforgiving. I loved you too much, and then I hated you too much. There's nothing left now. Turning away, I left the courthouse alone. The victory I had envisioned was as hollow as the life I now faced. In my ruthless pursuit, I had become the architect of my own desolation. The deceit and betrayal had indeed parted us forever, but the cost was my soul, lost in the shadows of vengeance and regret.